Good morning, everyone. So today I thought I'll summarize the Embrace report for you. Now, there's quite important learning from this report that always comes up in the MRCOG part two exam. Um, and as I was revising, I remember that this bit of the revision was always really boring. Uh, and I wish somebody had uh, summarized everything uh, for, um, for us to read um, and, and to listen to. Um, so it just makes it more interesting and you can focus a bit better. So this is what I've done for you. I've just gone through the report myself. And to be fair, the report's very well written and there's a lot of learning uh, for you as clinicians in the report, uh, apart from exam revision. So um, do give the report a read if you have got time. Um, but if not, then I've summarized some learning for you. So key messages, um, there is four high, fourfold higher um, rates of maternal mortality in the black ethnicity, threefold um, difference in maternal mortality in the mixed ethnicity, twofold difference in the Asian ethnicity, and this is all compared with the white ethnicity. Women aged over 40 years uh, mortality rate, rate are four times higher. Women aged between 35 to 39 years uh, mortality rates are two times higher when compared to women who are in their early 20s. So in the UK in 2016 to 2018, 8% of women who died during or up to a year um, following the pregnancy had severe and multiple disadvantages like mental health diagnosis, substance, substance abuse and domestic abuse. So for the indirect causes, 58% of maternal deaths in the UK were because of indirect causes like cardiac disease was the largest cause of indirect um, cause of death. Second largest was neurological causes like epilepsy and stroke. Direct causes of death, so things like thrombosis and thromboembolism, um, were, it was the highest uh, cause of direct maternal death during and up to six weeks after the pregnancy. Maternal suicide uh, was a leading cause of direct deaths uh, occurring within a year after the pregnancy. So epilepsy, um, there's con quite concerning rise in um, deaths from pseudop, which is sudden um, unexpected death in epilepsy. There's obvious risk factors uh, like uncontrolled seizures, tonic-clonic seizures, nocturnal seizures, and then epilepsy, which um, started in childhood. These are the obvious risk factors, and they were found to have been missed uh, or not really paid attention to in a lot of these patients. Nocturnal seizures, that's seizures of the night time, are red flag and they require urgent referral to an epilepsy service or um, obstetrician physician. So all maternity units um, should have an access to an epilepsy team, network and pathways uh, all established out to uh, improve access to um, the design designated epilepsy team, um, at least within a maximum of two weeks of referral. So these patients can get the help they need. So um, with bariatric surgery, um, they found that two uh, women died of bowel perforation because of anastomosis uh, at the site of anastomosis from the gastric bypass. Um, bariatric surgery should be regarded as a high risk um, pregnancy um, and should be looked after in the antenatal um, clinics. Um, four women have died from sickle cell disease. If a patient comes in with sickle cell crisis, multidisciplinary team involving obstetricians, midwives, hematologists, obstetric physicians and anaesthetists should be involved so the patient can be given expert clinical care um, to save their life. So pulmonary embolism, uh, patients who are re receiving thromboprophylaxis can still develop uh, a PE and, 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 you know, a thrombus and following the RCOG guidelines to investigate and treat these patients um, could really improve um, the clinical care offered to these patients. There's a lot of scans, um, which especially for the VQ scan that come back as inconclusive. Um, more definitive radiological 
um, diagnosis should be pushed for um, when these scans come back as incon inconclusive because it doesn't help to know whether this patient has got a PE or not um, despite doing a VQ scan. So if you're still unsure and, and the radiology um, are still uh, unsure, then, then a definitive diagnosis should be sought for. Stroke. Pregnant and postpartum women require rapid specialist um, care if they um, develop signs and symptoms suggestive of stroke. Now, that's something that they found in the report was being um, not really followed as well as it should. Obstetric hemorrhage. So, uh, objective uh, assessment of cumulative blood loss should be done and where there has been um, excessive blood loss um, there should be replacement of fluid and blood products because if that's not done then it can lead to acidosis and, and, and the patient can deteriorate. Senior clinicians should be involved in case of, of obstetric hemorrhage and, and one of them should at least have a helicopter view to call coordinate all the aspects of care. Two women died from, uh, from hemorrhage because of uterine inversion. So sepsis um, is still quite uh, common, um, still leads to quite poorly patients. Um, and if there's any signs of infection, um, then a treatment should involve um, looking inside the uterus and trying to empty the contents of the uterus um, to help resolve the maternal sepsis. So things like if there is any concerns about retained tissue and so forth. Well, I hope that you've found um, this video useful as I share with you the learning messages from the Embrace, the most recent Embrace report. As I've previously said that um, there can be quite um, important messages from here that do come up in the exam. So um, do try to pay attention and focus um, whilst you read the report. Um, this is just a reference to the report as to where I've get, got all this um, information from. I hope that you found this video useful and if you do then please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you can you can keep yourself updated with more content.